Hello and welcome back to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make Belgian sugar waffles. Mm, yummy, I love waffles. Sometimes they're referred to as Liège waffles. I believe I pronounced that right. Liège, Liège, something like that. I am sure someone will comment down below and correct my pronunciation. <laughs> So what makes these different than your classic batter waffle? Well, these are made from a yeast-based dough and they're packed with butter and this thing called pearl sugar. Um, now, pearl sugar is kind of hard to find here in the States at least. They won't have it probably at your local grocery store. If they do, that's awesome. I buy mine on Amazon, but uh, there's some specialty stores that may have it. But uh, yeah, they're really easy to do, really popular. There's like whole food trucks based around this type of waffle that drive around here and serve them with a variety of toppings. All the same toppings that you would put on pancakes or waffles, they can go on these waffles. They're super good. They're kind of crunchy and crispy on the outside, doughy on the inside with the burst of flavor from the pearl sugar. Now I have heard that you could use substitute with sugar cubes um, kind of crushed up instead of the pearl sugar but the pearl sugar is the way to go if you can do it. Really easy to do. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's get started. All right, so first I have my milk here and I heated it up to 105, 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Go ahead and put this in a large bowl here. And that is three quarters cup of milk and you could use whatever milk you want, 1%, 2% whole milk. And I'm gonna add in my yeast this is one packet or two and one quarters teaspoon of yeast. I'm just gonna agitate it just a little bit. So we wanna get our yeast started. And the reason why we are doing this is I wanna make sure that my yeast is good. And so I'm gonna let this sit for about five to eight minutes until it gets nice and foamy. If it doesn't get foamy, I am going to throw it away and start again because that means my yeast is bad or the liquid wasn't hot enough or if it was, or it was too hot and it killed the yeast. All right, here we go. So my yeast is nice and foamy. Depending on the yeast you're using, it'll look something like this. It might look a little bit different. And now what we wanna do is start adding in our ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my eggs, two large eggs. Go ahead and just give this a little whisk. All right, and then now I'm gonna switch over to a wooden spoon. I have two, I have eight ounces or two sticks of butter here. And then they're softened. And if your butter isn't quite soft enough, go ahead and just put it on like defrost mode in your microwave just to soften it up. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this in here. Now, if you are using a stand mixer, just go ahead and use your stand mixer with the dough hook. I don't own a stand mixer. I do everything by hand still, which is the way I like to do it. Someday I might get one. All right, and now I'm gonna start adding in my flour. About a half of it at a time, and I'm gonna take my salt and put my salt right on top of the flour. Okay, looking good. We will add some more. Now you'll notice I didn't add any sugar right to this dough. There are some recipes that will have you add maybe some brown sugar or some honey or something like that, which you can do as well. Add like three tablespoons or quarter cup of sugar. But I find that the pearl sugar, <laughs> which is, winds up being quite a bit of sugar, is enough. All right, once it's about at this stage where you kind of push it down and it doesn't stick to your finger, let's go ahead and incorporate the rest of the flour while kneading. Again, if you have a stand mixer, just go ahead and uh, knead it for about five minutes. All right, I have all of the flour incorporated and I'm kneading it. All right, once our dough is has been kneaded. I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer this over to a bowl. And we just wanna let it rise for about an hour until it doubles in size. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and cover this with some plastic wrap, or you can use 
you know, like a damp cloth or something like that. Let's just go ahead and cover this. We don't want it to dry out. And we'll just let it rise. All right, it's been about an hour. As you can see, the dough has doubled in size. Looking fantastic. And we're just gonna punch it down a little bit here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pearl sugar, and this takes all eight ounces. And we'll put it in there like that. It may seem like a lot of sugar. Remember, this particular recipe doesn't call for any sugar in, but you really need this, the pearl sugar, because that's what gives these sugar waffles um, pretty much their name. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take it and we're gonna just knead our dough, to get it all incorporated. I'm gonna just dump it out on my surface here. And you can just kind of knead it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna form it into like a little log, cut it in half, and then cut them in half again. And then I'm gonna cut these in half one more time. All right, now these are ready to cook in our waffle iron. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this right here on the middle. I did spray this with kitchen spray. And then I'm gonna push it down, turn it over, and go ahead and let it cook. It'll wind up cooking for probably three to four minutes. All right. Nice. There we go, looking awesome. Um, one thing you'll note is the sugar will melt into your waffle iron. The sugar will melt into your waffle iron and it's really, really hot. You don't wanna touch this waffle with your hand. Look at that, that's awesome. You don't wanna to touch the waffle with your hand um, because if you touch the little sugar pellets, they're gonna be, the little sugar, it's gonna be really, really hot. All right, and then you might wanna use like a wet towel to clean out the waffle iron once it cools a little bit. Let's go ahead and do another one. Some of the sugar has melted, some of it stayed in nice little chunks, which is really cool. It's part of the allure of these waffles. All right, I have a few of these Belgian sugar waffles done. I'm in the middle of cooking the rest of them. It turned out awesome. You can do whatever kind of toppings that you want. You can do like a Nutella and whipped cream, Nutella and like strawberries, uh, bananas, um, whatever you wanna do, classic waffle or pancake uh, toppings, or you can eat them plain as they are, or just do like a little bit of maple syrup, which is what I did uh, today. Super easy to do. There are some things that you need to watch out for, like the sugar, it gets really, really hot, so you don't really wanna touch them, touch the sugar and the hot iron, of course, uh, with your hands. But there we go. If I can make these, you can make these. I am Matt Taylor. This has been another episode of In the Kitchen with Matt. As always, if you have any questions or comments or requests, put them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thumbs up, down in the corner, push it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. All right, time for me to dive into this. Oh yeah. Nice and crunchy on the outside. Doughy on the inside. Hmm.